team for former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin continued presenting its case today, putting on the stand Dr. David Fowler, a former chief medical examiner for the state of Maryland. In stark contrast to the medical witnesses we heard from the prosecution, Dr. Fowler testified that the cause of George Floyd's death was well, pretty much everything except Derek Chauvin. From Floyd's heart condition to drugs to even carbon monoxide poisoning because Floyd's head was close to the exhaust pipe of the responding squad car. Yeah, you heard that correctly. An exhaust pipe is now on trial. So it shouldn't surprise you that Fowler's entire testimony, frankly, imploded once prosecutor Jerry Blackwell picked apart his findings during cross-examination, starting with debunking the theory that Floyd died in part due to vehicle fumes. Do you know if, in fact, the car was on or not? You didn't see any information or data from anybody who says, I either turned the car on or I'm the one who turned it off. You didn't see either one, did you? Correct. Was the car even on? Fowler, who had ruled out asphyxia in Floyd's death because of a lack of bruising on his neck, then admitted to Blackwell that bruises are rarely even a thing with this type of death. Do you agree, Dr. Fowler, that uh, the majority of cases where somebody dies of asphyxia are very subtle, and in fact, no traumatic manifestations are visible at all. That is correct, depending on the circumstances. Prosecutor Blackwell then nullified the studies Fowler had cited, showing that restraint in a prone position with or without body weight does not cause difficulty breathing. Is it true, Dr. Fowler, that none of the, of the prone restraint studies that you referred to actually studied uh, subjects who had someone's knee on their neck in the prone position? Is that true? That is true. Uh, none of the studies uh, went for as long as nine minutes and 29 seconds. Is that true? That is true. That, my friends, that is how you tear down a defense witness, by getting him to remarkably agree with the prosecution. Joining me now is Philip Atiba Goff, co-founder and CEO of the Center for Policing Equity, and Mary Moriarty, former chief public defender of Hennepin County, Minnesota. And Ms. Moriarty, I have to start with you first. Uh, that was a pretty uh, clinic. It was pretty much a clinic the prosecutor put on uh, in dismantling this witness. What did you make of, uh, of that exchange today? <laughs> Uh, it was a really effective cross-examination. Um, when he started out talking about the exhaust fumes, uh, I, I almost thought at the beginning, okay, well, that, that seems so implausible. I'm almost glad that he's taking that position. He also was rendering opinions, giving opinions on cardiology, pulmonology, um, toxicology, and Mr. Blackwell got him to admit he doesn't have expertise in any of those areas. And if you recall, the state has called a cardiologist, a pulmonologist, and a toxicologist. And uh, Mr. Blackwell got Fowler to admit um, he would defer to the opinions of an, a pulmonologist a number of times. So it was a really effective cross-examination. It, it was amazing. And, you know, I, I, I had my, my Howard class today, and I said to them, you know, one of the things that you want to really do is always know who you're talking about, right? And so this, this gentleman, mm -hmm. you know, who, I, I, you know, he embarrassed himself a bit today. He got a little bit embarrassed today. He is a former Maryland official. Um, he, he was here in, uh, in Maryland. Um, he cleared. He is somebody who had cleared police in a previous um, police killing. Um, he cleared police in, in the death of a man called Anton Black. Um, in 2018, Anton Black died after three Maryland police officers were on top of of his body for nearly six minutes. They continued pressing down on him for many minutes after he was handcuffed. Fowler's autopsy, because he was the guy in charge of that, the autopsy report ruled the death an accident and said there were no signs that police did anything wrong. So he's basically mostly an expert in saying police did nothing wrong. Your thoughts on that choice of somebody to testify for the defense, Philip? Well, what we saw all of last week was everybody and anybody who could line up and get a spot from the Minneapolis Police Department saying, yeah, that was wrong. It's out of policy. Um, uh, there's no best practice that says it's OK. Absolutely kneeling on somebody's trachea until they die is something we don't like to do. So I'm frankly impressed that the defense was able to get anybody with any kind of degree to come forward and say, maybe there was something else. And I want to be clear that if they left him up on the stand, he might well have said, you know, there's no evidence that aliens didn't kill him. Right. 
Um, so, you- you know, you're like, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. This is a person who no longer has that position, no longer requires that level of credibility. And that's what you're going to need to controvert everything that we all saw. We saw public lynching this summer. Everyone saw it. A random MMA fighter came by and called the cops on the cops. That's what we heard from last week. So you are going to need a fabulous to come in and provide anything like a shred of a credible uh, uh, a story in the, in the other direction. And if you're even remotely prepared, as the prosecution was in this case, that's going to fall apart almost instantly. You got to be glad about that. And also, yeah, this case yeah. on one trial, right, on, on, on one officer, it's so far short of what we're seeing protesters talk about in the streets in Minneapolis today. That that is a very good point. It's true, and and I think that people are 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 thinking about. All, they're trying to you know process all of these cases at once, Philip. They're trying to process the fact that this other officer is now being charged. But you are seeing, listen, in Minnesota, at, at least now we've had three officers charged uh, in deaths uh, of civilians. Uh, the only one convicted, um, as was noted in the last block by um, Johnny Cobb, is the black guy who killed the white lady. But it, it does feel like there is more momentum for toward prosecutors at least trying. Right, Philip, and is that what it's going to take? We've seen Marilyn Mosby try. We've seen other prosecutors at least say, you know what, we need to at least attempt a prosecution. Is that, in your view, progress? Uh, I mean, I, I don't. I'm, I'm less embarrassed by the prosecution in this case. It, it's it's been incredibly thorough. That's great. But it's not just the prosecution coming forward and doing their job effectively and professionally. It's always it's also the profession saying, please don't pin this on us. Right. Part of what's happening is if there is a not guilty, God help us all. And I think everybody in law enforcement understands there's no way to do the job if this is somehow part of what's legal. So everybody's coming together saying, let's accept this. Let's make this the one random error that doesn't indict the entire profession. And yeah. uh, and so, yeah, you're seeing you're seeing some momentum in that way. But I don't think that that generalizes. I don't think that's going to uh, happen in the Dante Wright uh, Wright case. And I don't think that makes us all safer or makes black people feel like, oh, now it's good with us and the cops. Well, and right. And, and Mary Moriarty, the other group of people that have had a credibility issue are prosecutors, because we've seen even Democratic prosecutors who get votes from black people refuse to prosecute in cases like the Mike Brown case and cases like Breonna Taylor. And so prosecutors are sort of under the spotlight, too, uh, because we do have this sense that, you know, white citizens are treated as citizens and black citizens are treated as subjects. And they're simply the people who police uh, police on, uh, but not the people that that police protect. In your view as a prosecutor, coming from the point of view of the partners of the police, what do we need to do to get off of this dime? Because this is not a place that's sustainable. Well, remember that this case was taken away by the county prosecutor and given to the attorney general, um, Mm. partly because of that very issue. Uh, I I see a uh, potential for tremendous change here. Our community, this, this didn't start with George Floyd, obviously. Um, there's a history with the Minneapolis Police Department that people in our community, particularly in our Black community, have been trying to bring to the attention of police, of policy officials, and it's been ignored for years and years and years. George Floyd was like our Ferguson moment. That was just kind of the eruption of all of this trauma, this tension, uh, this anguish over what had been happening to people in our Black community for many, many years. And I don't think any of us want it to go, well, we're not going to let it go back to the way it was. It's not going to go back to normal. There's tremendous pressure and actually willingness on a lot of our policymakers part to make changes, um, to see that this, I mean, it obviously did happen again right in the middle of this trial, um, but there's tremendous momentum here to try to change this. I'll also say to uh, uh, Philip's point about the MPD getting on the stand and, and saying this isn't who we are and what we do. Right. There, people in the community have noticed that, and of course, people in the Black community know. And as a former public or a public defender, I know I see body cam where yeah. police treat uh, people like this all the time. It, or just it is what they do. Always in death. Exactly. Yeah, it is and what that's they the do. Problem. It is what they yeah. do. That's the problem. They're yes. treating black people as yes. subjects and not as citizens. And that is the problem. Philip Atiba Goff, Mary Moriarty, thank you both very much. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.